Hi everyone, you're welcome to Camera Freak once again. My name is Kemi and I'm your tutor. So today we'll be learning how to make a shirt collar. My dear friend, for a very long time, this thing scared the hell out of me. So I just stayed away from making them. I, they just, they just, I, I couldn't just figure out how to make it. And um, if you're in that shirt, you don't have to wait so long. So before then, I would like to say a very huge welcome to those joining us for the very first time today. You're welcome. Please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So it's a two piece collar. We have the collar stand and uh, the main collar piece. First, we'll be going through the pattern drafting. We'll cut and we'll cut our fabric and then we'll move on to the sewing process. I'd love to see you replicate yours. Please subscribe to this channel and uh, you can keep in touch with us via our social media handle at Chemafric Fashion, both on Facebook and Instagram. So I'll be waiting to hear from you. I want to see yours, really. I'll love to. I'll love to see you make yours. And you can tag us and all that. So let's move on to learning how to make a shirt collar. So we've been creating a shirt collar for this shirt. So you fix your collar after you have sewn your shirt. You've created, join all the necklines and even join the sides. But you have this opening because it's a shirt. So the first thing you will do is to measure around here, around your neckline, so that you know the length to draft for your collar. So I'm just folding my neckline and uh, holding it like so, so that I can take my accurate measurements. So first, you measure from your center front, including your placket. Measure from your center front to the shoulder line. And for this, we have five inches. So from the shoulder line up to the center back, we have a, this is like, a, 10, 1, 8. Okay, about 10 inches. 10 inches. So, we'll do away with this and take our paper. We'll be creating a two piece collar that has a, a collar stand and then the main collar. So, I'm creating a startup line. And uh, Note that this part of my collar will be on fold. So I'm not folding my paper, but when I'm putting it on the clothes, I'll have to fold here. So I want my collar stand to be one inch long. And I think that's just perfect. Don't go beyond one inch. And then the length, our total collar was uh, nine point okay it was 10 inches rather so first i'll mark my 10 inches here 10 inches so that's when it's put on fold right this is our center back center back and here will be our center front so it's the center back that will be on fold so we're going to measure one inch one inch one inch and then we'll draw this straight one inch but that's not what we'll be using anyway so now we're going to mark our shoulder so recall that when we started measuring we started measuring from our center front and our shoulder was at five inches okay fortunately for this uh, shoulder appears to be at the center it's not always like that so you have to measure the you have to measure the center front to the shoulder so whatever it gives you even if it's not half of the value so we have a one inch here so from here we are going to raise our collar by one inch so instead of this we want to raise this side by one inch and this side by one inch so you take your one inch up here take this line one inch higher one inch higher so such that our collar will look like this so we are connecting this shoulder line to this edge of the collar 
yeah by raising our collar by so our shoulder line is around here you connect these dots so we have successfully we have raised this line by one inch so i'll just cross check to make sure that i still have my to make sure that i still have my 10 inch 10 inches uh, collar band collar stand rather so we have 10 inches here right okay so at this point we don't want our center front collar to just be straight you can make it straight anyway but to just give it a kind of nice finishing and a curvy edge come in by one inch and connect it to create that curvy front of a shirt collar so we have our collar stand this way so you can cut this collar stand and we'll come and cut our main collar piece So we have our collar stand here. So now we'll be cutting our collar and uh, it's still going to be on fold on this edge at the center back. So, and um, remember that when we have our collar stand this way, we'll be attaching our collar on the upper edge of the collar stand. So that way, we want to create a kind of edge for our main collar piece we are going to be using this curve as well but this time you turn the curve inward hmm? so recall that um uh we started covering this edge of our collar stand one inch after the center front of our collar so that's that will mark also mark the end of our main collar piece so you just turn your collar stand this way you may need to pin it down so that it doesn't keep shifting around but you mark 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 this curve that you have on the upper part of your collar of your collar stand rather and stop just before your curve here so now we're going to join this line and to form a base for our main collar piece so we have a a uh, five inch straight line. Okay. And uh, we'll curve, create our curve this way. So now you can just be creative with this part of your drafting. You can make your color, let's say we need a color of two inches or you can make it less but it should not be less than one inch anyway it should not be equal with the color stand so i'll just mark this two inch line straight but then i want here to be wider remember the pointy edge of your collar mm -hmm. so here too you can be creative you can make your collar this way it's not determine how much uh, your collar will fall at the front neckline center front so I'll just land here a little bit and connect this with a curve hmm? so here totally depends on what you want So remember this side is on fold and this our this part goes to the center front that go to the center back so your notches will come in handy when you are cutting anyway so you can still mark notch your five here you notch the center and all that so that when you are sewing together you know what to match with the other so it's just as simple as that now we'll cut hmm. 
I think I'll modify my color a little bit here. So I'll just leave that part. Like I told you, it depends on what you want. So you have can be creative. So at the end of the day, we are going to have something like this on one side of your neck. So your collar is going to be falling on your collar stand. So on each of our collar, we'll be cutting, on each of our collar, we'll be cutting two pieces on fold. We need, so basically we need four of these. So we need one on fold and another one to cover it. That's two pieces on fold. And also the same thing with the color stand. So let's let's work with this part of our paper, of our fabric rather. So at this point, I like to pin it down so we don't have it shifting all around. So before we cut, I just want you to see how much allowance I'll be adding. So I'll be adding half inch all through, all around my collar stand. Half inch, half inch, all around. So that when I sew it, I'll have this left. Because I will still sew by that same half inch. That way you can get an accurate measurement. So I need two of these actually. So I can put here on fold so that I can cut the two at once. This pointy edge. So we have our color stand. Uh, now onto the color, main color piece. I, okay. So we have this part on fold. Just be pinning it so that we don't have it shifting all around. Remember, we are working with half inch allowance, and um, that's what we are going to put all around here as well.
So now we have a main color piece and a, a color stand, which is going to look this way at the end of the day. So, but then we need to put an interface in. You can use a color stay, you can use, depending on the thickness of the fabric, you can use a soft gum stay. If you are working with color stay, please don't put it all around. You need to exclude the allowances because you may have, a, it, may, it may become too stiff for you to bend. So, but I'll be working on this and I will also like to have it around. So I'm going to put it on without the allowance so that when I place it, it will just be at the center this way. But on my color stand, I'm going to put it on only, I will put an interface in on only one, one piece. Or I can actually put on the boat anyway, and I'll be putting it all through, including the allowance. Right now, I'm cutting my interfacing without any allowance. pieces of interfacing for each of my color the color and the inner lining of the color so for this I'm going to cut using my clothes now like I said before you can actually cut it only on the lining but I like here to be as firm as possible so I'm, I'm cutting the entire width of the clothes So I'll just go on and um, place my interfacing on my color stand and iron. So see what I'm doing here. On the wrong side, remember that you'll be placing the sticky parts of your interfacing on the wrong side of your fabric. And um, for the main color, this is the wrong side of my fabric. And remember, we didn't have a uh, add allowance. So I'm going to put in it inside that's with half an inch on all the edges of your stand. It can actually guide you when you are sewing. So it kind of makes the work easier. For me. So now we'll go on and iron this and we'll get back to the sewing aspect. So we've ironed our uh, interfacing on our color stand and the main color piece. So now we'll be working on the main color piece first. Onto the sewing aspect. So the first thing we'll be doing is to sew around the edges of our color stand. So this is the part uh, of our main color. This is the part we'll be attaching to the color stand. So you start sewing, you won't, this is the only part you won't be sewing on your collar. So we're going to start uh, sewing here by half an inch onto this edge. And just remember that this interfacing can help you here. So just sew at the edge of your interfacing, that's if you have placed them correctly. So continue sewing your half inch all through to this other edge and down. So you're sewing the two collar, you're sewing the two collar together. That's the back and the front of your collar. So onto the sewing machine, let's see how that is done. Okay. 
So if need be, you need to pin your two pieces together so that you won't have it shifting all around. And then, so I'll just start sewing mine here. When you get to the pointy edge of your collar, you put down your needle and turn so that you can have a sharp edge there. So I've sewn round. The next thing you're going to do is to reduce this allowance you have. Just reduce it slightly on all the edges. So you have like one quarter of an inch instead of the half inch you seal by initially. So at the edges here, because you want something sharp, so just snipe the corner off so that you can have a pointed edge. So next, I'll turn this around and onto my ironing board to iron this in. Now you turn here in. Use your zenin sharp objects to push it out. And next, you iron your collar piece. So off we go to iron, and then I will show you the next thing. So we have our collar well pressed and looking very neat. So the next thing we'll be doing is to sandwich um, our collar in between this collar stand, the two pieces of the collar stand. So we want to achieve something like this at the end of the day, but then we want to sandwich it in between. So you're just going to place this. Uh, I forgot to mention you need to notch the midpoint of both your collar stand and your main collar piece. These two now they are slightly different. So I'm notching the midpoint of my collar stand. both at the top and at the bottom so I need to notch the top as well so now I want this to go between these two so I'm going to match the midpoints together and then Then. 
we are sandwiching the we are sandwiching the collar in between the two collar stand and at this point it's necessary that you pin it so you don't have it shifting all around so i'll just go ahead and put my pins all through So we have this. So we have this, and we're going to sew by half an inch. Remember the half an inch allowance we added. So we're sewing here by half an inch all through to the other end of our collar stand. Half an inch. Remember, you are going to create a curve here. So now we're going to the sewing machine to just do that. So I'm sewing here by half an inch. Remember, I'm not sewing my main collar. So I'm just sewing the collar stand at this edge before joining the collar. And don't forget your curve here. Making use of pins and notching your pattern, your clothes rather can help a great deal with this step. Back to our curvy edge. This. So now, because we worked around the curve at this side of our pattern, we need to create beautiful notches so that we can have a smooth curve. And you can also trim your allowance a little bit even before notching. especially at the corners. And next, we want to pull this out and then we go to iron again. beautiful already so we just iron this and we'll move on to the last part of it which is how to attach it to the main clothes so just press 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 around front and back so now we have a collar ironed and looking very beautiful and we're going to have something like this at the end so now I want to attach a collar to our shirts. And 
So we'll be pinning and sewing by half an inch, starting from the edge of our placket here. And make sure you match the midpoint. That's your center back with the center back on your collar. So you can even, you should even start from your center back actually. So put your pins all through. That can save you a lot of trouble. So if you have not your shoulder point as well, match the shoulder point on your collar with what you have on your clothes. So if you have taken your measurements correctly here, that could be very, very helpful. You don't want to start readjusting your collar all over again. That's why it's very important to get the measurement right at the first time. Have here figured out. Notice that we are pinning only one one side, only the inner collar stand. So So, perfect. I'm just going to sew by half an inch. So one one of our collar stand piece onto the clothes. So I'm going to sew by half an inch from the center front all around to the shoulder, to the center back, to the other shoulder, and back to the center front. So we'll be sewing by half an inch. We have sewn one of our collar stand onto the clothes. Now I want to attach the second one, but we we'll need to also pin it in so that you don't make mistakes. So pin in your allowance all through. Mm -hmm. 
okay so our color is almost done on to the last step we are going to sew a very clean stitch around this fine edge and onto the parts we paint so we just sew it all around to give it a very clean finishing so let me start from the midpoint the center back this is not necessary i'm just I'll be sewing by about one eighth of an inch thereabouts. This edge can be a bit dicey. Then, let's keep pushing. So we have a neatly so neatly finished color here. We are done, right? We're done making our shirt colors and it's not that difficult. You can see how it rests very perfectly, sweet and all that. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and keep in touch with us via Camera Freak Fashion on Facebook and on Instagram. Be sure to watch our other tutorials. You need to stick around with us because we'll be uploading lots of great stuff on this channel. So see you in the next video.